Hello, active traders, and welcome to Winning Day in Swing Trading Breakouts with myself, Ken Calhoun, and my longtime colleague, Harry Boxer. It's a picture of Harry and I at the uh, New York uh, Traders Expo last February. Uh, great to see everybody here. As always, all information is for educational use only. No advice about to buy, sell, or holds being provided. So, uh, Harry, it's great to see you here. Nice being here. All right, hey, for all of you, all the thousands of you who will be watching this on YouTube in the future and everybody here tonight, really pleased to be working with Harry Boxer. He's the best of the stock picking and breakout traders out there. Harry Boxer is the founder of www.thetechtrader.com, a live trading room featuring his trade alerts and tech market analysis. He's a veteran, a 45-year veteran technical analyst and stock picker. Harry's the author, and by the way, this book sold out instantly at the Traders Expo. I remember it, a whole big stack of them, they sold out like within 20 minutes. Uh, Harry's the author of Profitable Day and Swing Trading, a great book, highly recommend, designated the best new investing book of the year for 2015 by the Traders Almanac. Harry's been featured at Money Show Traders Expos, TheStreet.com, CNBC, Forbes Magazine. Let's give everybody a warm welcome to Harry Boxer. And now let me turn it over to you, Harry. It's a real pleasure to be working with you. Okay, uh, hello, hello everybody. Um, this is Harry Boxer. I'm the author of the Tech Trader. Uh, dot com. It's a uh, site for active traders, a lot of day traders. We have a trading room with a couple hundred, three, four hundred people in it every day. Uh, very, very astute, bright, active guys that trade for a living. Um, not, not a lot of newbies. It's uh, just a place where people are very um, uh, helpful to each other, uh, act as mentors, uh, and I, I love being there every day. And that's one of the reasons that that's what gets me up in the morning. Okay, appreciate everybody. And as I was saying, I have a website for active day traders, but we, we not only day trade, we swing trade too. I put out three to four swing trade ideas uh, per day. Um, you can see down on the bottom, some, some of the trades we had here uh, were returned between 25 and 85% in a very short period of time. Um, I, I pride myself in um, pattern recognition and spotting breakout trades, and um, in particular during the day, when you, uh, if you get a copy of my book and re read about um, what my methods are. I'm a big breakout trader, and so is Ken, by the way. We, we like to see stocks that are thrusting early on, stocks that are showing consolidation patterns of a bullish nature that when they do pull back, get quiet, and then start to move again and trend the rest of the day. And although normally I would show you those kind of charts, I think today's a very poignant day in the market. We obviously had a big hit. Uh, the market got extremely um, negative at one point in, in terms of intensity. We had a negative tick of minus 1567. I haven't seen that in a very long time. Um, and, and so that told me that we may be near or at a selling climax. Uh, when you look at some of the charts I'm going to show you, you're going to see that some of these indices are extremely oversold short term. Now, it doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean we're not going to enter a bear market. It just simply means that there may be a setup here for a short term trade back three to five days or more, or even as much as weeks in terms of a consolidation uh, pattern. Um, but I, I wanted to just, before I get into that, I want to invite everybody to try my site for free, completely, with no credit card required. Come in, check out the trading room. Here's a uh, sample of what's going on in my trading room right now. Every night there's people talking about um, stuff. They're talking about, uh, you know, I have people 24-7 basically in my room, although most, most of them are in in the mornings, of course. Uh, you can see that during the course of the day, posts from everybody, including myself, about pertinent information, both up and down, about what, what's what, what's happening in the markets, and um, a lot of really strong information is passed by. Um, and then you can always send private messages and things of that nature. Um, what I want to do today is show you my charts, and I'll show you what I'm seeing. We've had a very long move in the market. The market's been up since since 19 and 2009 when it traded down to 666 and then ran all the way up to 21.35. That was basically a 300% move up, um, something of that nature, in, or was it was a 200%. Bottom line is the market had a major move over the last few years, and you can see the trend it was in. And, and the narrower trend here shows me where the trend was since 2011 in, in a nice rising channel. Now, the, the plunge we had in August here broke that channel. There was the trend right there. It broke it, and we snapped back to it. We also multiple tops, and then rolled over in a one, two, three, four, five wave, Elliott wave decline. Now that decline today on the S&P 500 created an engulfing type of pattern, which is very negative and could mean a drastically lower move coming up even as far as net down at 1820. But I don't think 
we've got that much more to go in terms of time. I think the next day or two, you could see an important low. Let me also say there's a possibility the markets could gap up tomorrow. McClellan Osley closed at minus 209 or 211. I'll show you that in a moment. And, and the bottom line is, though, that a lot of the indicators with the negative ticks and the McClellan oscillators and a lot of uh, um, um, a lot of other indicators that I follow that show extremely oversold at this level. Um, when you look at the last three lows here, here, and here on the S&P, we tagged that at the end of the day today. We could easily bounce off this level. Now, what's going to be important to note is if we've rolled over and if we've created a new topping pattern in here and we're going into a major bear market that takes us down to 1,600 or worse, my forecast could be 1,820, 1,715, 1,600 if this really falls apart. But what, we, what I think is going to occur, because markets never go straight down, they never go straight up. You're going to get some kind of bounce in this area, creating some sort of, if it's a strong bounce like we had here, obviously we're going to make a much bigger move. But the pattern that I foresee developing is some sort of consolidation for the next two, three weeks, maybe two, three days. But the bottom line is, if it rolls over from here and takes this zone out, you can see where there's double bottom, rising bottoms, and major trend line. We take this zone out without a bounce, it could just fall away in kind of a flash crash. So we're at that critical level where we need to take a look at, and, and it's not just the S&P and NDX. If you look at the transportation at Russell, it looks way worse, way worse. But let's take a look at the NDX. That's the NASDAQ 100. I follow that closely. You can see that the NDX, looking even though it plunged in the last four days, is in a different, much more bullish configuration than the S&P, which is already down near the lows. The NDX is making a higher low and probably will make a higher low. Well, what I'm forecasting is that the S&P bottoms around here, but the NDX may bottom around 4,000, 4,050. So uh, another 100, 140 points down. If we do that early tomorrow morning or over the next day or two, we, we will have dropped from 4,700 down to 4,100 or 600 points straight down in a week. Now, with the kind of volume we're seeing here, this is a downside thrust that could initiate a new bear market. However, we had that same kind of plunge here with the same kind of volume there back in October of 2014, which then resulted in a monster snapback, and we had the same plunge here. So I wouldn't give up the ship just yet, but no question that the NASDAQ 100 leaders are falling apart. I'll show you that in a bit. And then what really gets my goat is when I look at the transportation index, and this thing, by the way, when you take a look at this plunge here, the transportation index made its all-time high at 93.10, December 1st, 2014. That's a year and a month ago. So it's been down for a year, whereas the S&P and NDX um, has been holding the market together. The Transportation Index and the Russell 2000, check this out. Plunging, absolutely plunged. So, and But what I'm seeing here, when you look at both of these indices, is that we're at the bottom of this parallel channel. If you connect the highs and the lows off of this low and that low, we're right there. We've actually taken out two layers of support. Notice, though, well, last week when we plunged and formed the little bear wedge, what resulted from that? Well, again, if the market's going to be, and we're going into a transitionary bear phase, a bear market, and we're going down to 5,800 or 5,300, then we probably will get a bounce up in that zone first because we're at an oversold short-term condition and we're at the bottom of the channels. So that is what that looks like, the, the transportation index um, and the Russell, which looks ugly, ugly, ugly. So look at the Russell. It's down near the 2013 um, summer lows. And so a you know, year and a half since we've seen those, or two and a half years since we've seen those lows. So we're, we, you know, th these have led the market down. The small cap stocks uh, and the transportation stocks have actually led the market lower. Same thing here, by the way. When we plunge and broke support here, we formed a six or seven day bear wedge and then fell away. But we're now actually down through the bottom of that channel and down through the bottom of support. So I think we get a snapback on all these indices rather rather soon. McClellan Oscillator, which you can't tell much from, if you look at it on an um, hourly chart, it's a little bit more indicative of where the markets might be. Take a look at um, the last few lows here, here, and now again in here. Um, this zone in here, historically, looking at a weekly chart, you'll see that there's been multiple lows in this zone down between minus 250 and 300 in the McClellan Oscillator. And it's been a long time since we've seen 4 450. Those were a big, big volatile lows. 
Um, so I've noticed that the whole pattern has been narrowing with declining tops and rising bottoms. So one of two things happens here. We either bounce sharply off of here or we're going to plunge and get multi-year lows in the oscillators. Uh, today, an oscillator, look how this, the volatility in this market. We were up and we came down. We bounced, we pulled back. We bounced again and pulled back. We bounced again and closed at the low. So this is why this zone down here represents an opportunity, I think, along with the big negative tick we had of minus 15 cents. 67 today. So there's a lot of reason to be pessimistic and optimistic at the same time. You've got to be really careful here. And one of the rules in my room is I am, I am, I'm on all day giving you guys videos, all day, six, seven, eight times a day. I come on for 20, 30, 40 minutes and I do a complete update on the individual chart patterns and how they're developing during the day. But the rules are when I give you a stock, I give you support and resistance, and I give you targets and I give you stops. You have to take the loss when stocks get stopped out because we've seen so many instances of stocks that have just gotten completely whacked. Here's an example, SUNE. Um, we were trading this stock up in the air when it ran, 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 and ran, and I had a $28 stop on it. From this stock from 28 went down to 2 You cannot trade a stock no matter how good you think it is. Look at GoPro. Everyone in the world loved the stock. I stopped out at 90 up here. And I haven't gotten back into it, other than a swing trade in here. This stock today was trading at 14. Guess what this was after hours today? Anybody see this? 10.29 was a low today. $10 from 98. If you trade without stops in the market, you're just asking for financial disaster. Let's go to some of the components of the NASDAQ 100 because it's important to see what's cooking. Here's your long-term view on Apple. Apple broke its major trend line in the August flash crash. It got right back up to that line. It kissed it here. It kissed it there. It reached the head and shoulders type pattern that it had neckline there, and now it rolled over. Apple is leading the market lower, no question about it. And if Apple should take out this zone here between 90 and 92, you're going to have a market collapse. So we need to have Apple holding in this zone here. Hopefully, we can make this the major trend channel and have a bottom in this area and go back up again. But you don't know that. So Apple is in uh, on the daily chart. You can see it's rolling over. Google was looking great for a while. And one of the reasons why the NDX kept making new highs is Google and Amazon and Netflix. Look, look, look at these three. All three were making higher highs. But the strength finally is starting to cave. Google took a hit this week from 780 to 700. And when it broke here and snapped back today, Right to resistance, look at the moving averages are crossing over. I use crossover moving averages because oftentimes when I see crossovers here, like here, that's what kind of move you get. The uh, stock moving averages crossed over, look at that move you had. So moving averages crossing over to the downside, maybe the beginning of a big slide. So this is why I'm saying that this is one of the more critical times in the market in the last seven years. We either are going to make a low in here and take another leg up, or we're done and we're going to stair-step our way lower on a lot of these stocks. So it's time to go short. Before I'm done today, I'll show you some examples of my boxer shorts list. I have a list called boxer shorts, and uh, they really work. Some more of the components besides Google, Amazon starting to roll over. See it? It broke the, resort, uh, it broke the support right there. It, it gapped down through the support, and the moving averages are now crossing over, and the stock is barely able to bounce. And today, it's testing its major trend line. And as far as I'm concerned, and lateral support, if, Af if Amazon gets through here, this could plunge your way towards 500. And a lot of stocks are very vulnerable up here in the NASDAQ 100. Some more examples are um, Priceline, which is really hurting the NDX. It's dropped from 1,500 nearly for the high 1,474 down to almost under 1,100. So it's dropped 400 points in three waves down. I would not be surprised if it bounced in a fourth wave and then rolled over near 1,000 before it's over or more. Priceline is leading the NDX lower. It's broken its trend line and it's broken a lot of support levels. That's the weakest sister of the NASDAQ generals, I call them. Facebook is looking great, but you can see how this current consolidation coil. One of my theories, folks, is that the higher in a pattern a consolidation exists, the less reliable it is. And when it breaks, it, it's significant. Notice how it broke, snapped back, broke, bounced off support, and had an engulfing day today. And this one could fall all the way down to 85, 87 zone quickly 
if this market breaks in the next day or two. So that's some examples of the um, major players. I do want to show you Intel and Microsoft. I love Intel long term, but look at that chart long term. I'm looking for, to buy Intel down in the high 20s. I think it's a $45 stock, if not higher than that. Um, but more importantly, you can see how one, two, three, four, and the truncated fifth wave, it looked like it was consolidating. It suddenly broke support right there and got pummeled. Internal trend line and back down again. I think that your target is 29 and a half, 30 before it's over on Intel, if not lower. Um, and Microsoft, which was acting great as well, suddenly plunged and took out its rising flag, plunged into the gap, and may very well see 48, 49 in the next few days um, before you see some important support. Look at that engulfing pattern today. Not good. So the market's in dire straits right now, and we need to be really careful about how we approach the markets. Now, some of the stuff I follow ETFs-wise are very important. I've already showed you the um, in some of the indices like the T2106, that's the McClellan Oscillator uh, numerical for the, um, I mean, the T2106 is McClellan Oscillator. If you look at T2108, it's something I follow closely. It's the percentage of stocks above the 40-day. When you get up near 70, the market's overbought. When you get down around uh, single digits, it's extremely oversold. In addition to the oscillators I showed you and all the indices I showed you and everything else I showed you, we're at a point in time where the oscillator is at almost historical lows. Not quite, but it's the second lowest reading we've seen since 2011. That's five years. So, um, and the last time we got down in this range here, was back here, which created a big rally. So somewhere between this that level and this level, down in that zone, I think is going to create a snapback opportunity. And so again, one of the reasons why I feel like the market is potentially in a mode where it can rally back is Elliott Wave one, two, three, four, five waves down and oversold on a lot of these indicators uh, is one of the reasons why I think there may be a great trading opportunity for on the long side, not the short side. I think some of the stocks are extremely stretched to the downside. Now, uh, some of the stocks, the ETFs that I follow closely, the stocks, the ETFs, the groups that led the market up were semiconductors and biotech. Look at the semiconductor group roll over and get cream. It's leading the market down now. But, yes, it's near support, near here, and oversold. It could come a little lower. We may see 46 and a half in the next day or so, or we may even see 44 if you get a plunge. But looking at the long-term pattern, that is a support zone. And the major trend line as well coming through here, is just below here in this 46 and a half, 47 zone. So I would look for a bounce. If the bounce is weak or it shows kind of a bear consolidation, then we're in big trouble and we're going lower. The other major indice, of course, is the biotech. Look at this move, the biotech move that's had in the last several years. This has literally gone from four or five up to over 100. 20 fold increase in biotech. So many biotechs. Stocks have done so well in the last few years. And in 2015, I said, look for 2014 and 15. I, I, I said, look for the, uh, the biotechs to have big years. But when we had this little mini head and shoulder rolled over and snapped back the resistance at the neckline and the, and the declining moving averages, that was a signal we're going lower. We plunged. We formed a big bear wedge. Basically, we let wave one, two, three, and four triple top and roll over again hard. There's possible movement down towards 40. 244.45, but if we see that in the next day or two, we're down near the bottom of the channel, we're near lateral resistance, uh, support, excuse me, we may very well may see a very important buying point for somebody's biotech short term. But there's still the possibility on all these indices that we're, we, because of the engulfing patterns, that we could see one, two, or three more sharp days in a row down that takes it sharply lower, and we get extreme negative ticks and extreme oscillator readings to the point where the market has to snap back like a rubber band. A couple of the uh, ETFs that um, Ken and I will both show you today. The ultra short VIX is a beauty. And the, the, the UVXY, phenomenal movement. When it gets the movement, look at the move it had in August when the market plunged. It only went from 25 to 91, and that took less than two weeks. Well, a new movement has started. We had a big reversal of resistance, but it hit support and it reversed today. If the market plunges, 
And if the UVXY manages to get over 49.50, we can see 60, 65 quickly, maybe more. The other side, uh, there's another little one more leveraged. The um, when I say leverage, it's more leverageable because it's about 150 price. The TVIX is two times VIX short, and that had a big reversal from seven and a half to ten today. Massive move, almost ten. And it's telling me that with this base to break out and retest, where support is right here on the TVIX. The stop is down here, and that's a long way from where it is now. But the move could take it to 1416 if you get a plunge in the market. Oil. Well, boy, did we have fun with SCO, which is short oil. I've been telling all my subscribers since the 4045 range, which was in here, that I felt the SCO, which we traded here to there, and then formed a little inverse head and shoulders and broke out and formed the flag here, that if it got through 100, 101, we were going to go long. And within a month, we traded up to 197, nearly doubling the SCO. It's very volatile. It got down to 177. It ran up to 196, 19 point swing today. Yesterday it had a 22 point swing. It's, it's had one, two, three, four, five waves up. One of the reasons why I'm a little pessimistic about this one is because it's gone too far too fast. It's had five waves. And extrapolating the channel, when you look at it from this standpoint, it looks like it could go to 230, 35. And it very well may happen if oil plunges into the high 20s. But you got to play this one with stops. Uh, and the, one of the ways of doing that on a swing trade, you see every day it's had a higher low. When that lows, when these, and today it challenged that low, but it held it. If you see the SCO get under 175, that's your stop. Because then it's got a shot at coming back to 150 or worse. If it takes out the double top up here near 197, you can see that rocket right to 220, 30. But it's not the kind of stop. I want to trade at this point because of the price doesn't give me any leverage. In any case, ETFs are smoking some of the financial. Uh, look at the TZA, for example, a small cap. Go back a long ways. You'll see the stock has the potentiality of being 78.80 and 62 right now because of the breakout today. And you can see where resistance is. So that would be my target on it. But a lot of ETFs got that breakout in the last day or two. Yes, they're overbought short term, but the funny thing about ETFs is when they get going, the momentum is phenomenal. If they pull back and hold, say, 57, it could then rip to 77. It could get a 20-point swing. It all depends on how it acts when it pulls back and whether it holds support. Um, 57 would be a place I would consider entering, and then 50 is where I'd stop it. So you, uh, 55, excuse me. So you have a two-point risk here for a huge upside on something like this, if and when it pulls back to that range. We have uh, others to look at, too. This follows the um, small cap. If you're looking at the S&P short, the SPXU is the way, one to go. This broke out of a little base. And it's been up five days in a row. And after pulling back this morning at 36, it rocketed to almost 40, 39.77, close 39.49. That was up 7% today. My target is 43.44 zone or more if the market plunges. So tomorrow is going to be important because this could roll over and pull back hard, similar to what it did here, and then it collapsed. I don't trust ETFs as far as, as, far as I can throw them. I think the best way to um, trade an ETF is by trading on intraday only. Don't try to be a swing trader with an ETF. You're better off going in every morning on the first pullback and trading them like we did today. Just to give you an example, on the UVXY this morning, I know Ken did the same. On my one-minute chart, the stock started out with a drop. And then popped. And when it pulled back here and held a couple times, started to move, we, we got in around that 36 and a half range, and we had targets all the way up. I got some people out, some at 40, some, some at 42, and some at 44. And you can see it plunged down to 40 and a half, and after hours, it's trading back at 44 and a half again. So this is telling me that there's a possibility we, unless the futures really come on strong here, or that we may open lower, have a lot of these ETFs spike, and then. Um, be very careful tomorrow. The, the, one of the other ETFs that I trade a lot of is the LABD and LABU. The um, LABD is an ultra short biotech, triple bear biotech. Look what that did today. Opened down around 48 and a half and ran up to 61. That's a pretty nice day trade. The LABD daily chart, you can see that run up. It's extremely overbought and it's near resistance, but you may very well see 65, 66 tomorrow morning before it rolls over. Um, 
the other side of the coin is LABU, which I believe, if the market turns, could be a great vehicle because it's so cheap. When I say cheap, I mean leverage-wise. This is plunged in a um, one, two, three, four, five wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and this is a three-wave corrective wave five. We may see another wave and then a big plunge to end this. Um, I don't know, but I do think uh, tomorrow morning, if this plunges down in that eight zone, we may see a good snapback opportunity to 10, 11, 12 over the next day or two or three. So keep your eyes open. Be vigilant. This is a very important time for you not to get lazy. Pay very close attention to everything you're looking at. I want to show you some of my ideas on the um, what we call box of shorts. These are some of the shorts that we had this year that have really worked well. Obviously, the biotechs are weak and have weakened. When this broke support on the trend line and then snapped back and from the rising wedge, we went short. I had a target of 30. We tagged it. We ran back up to the, to the parallel line. We shorted it. It ran back down. We covered it today. So that's the kind of trading we'd like to do at, at techtrader.com. Check out this one. When this stock broke here and formed the bear flag, we were short at about 47. And I know a lot of people didn't hold it a year, but today it's 4, 90% down. EMES is even worse than that. Check this out, everyone. 145.71. And when it collapsed and formed the bear wedge, we went short at about 75. It, it got down to 270 yesterday. Sometimes there's no reason to cover a short. If you see any reason to cover a short, this here was a big spike on heavy volume, and when it pulled back, I told my people to cover it because until I was sure, and the pullback came on low volume, it showed a lot, it, that the stock may have maybe in a bottoming process, left shoulder, head right shoulder, but it collapsed again and kept going down. So that's what you have to pay attention to. Some more ideas: uh, current shorts that we are short, BR, BMRN, Biomarine, Biomarine. Broke the head and shoulder top here and rallied back to resistance. We shorted it about 115. It's now 84 and falling. Although it is at support, I gave told my guys today, either cover some today and some tomorrow if it hits the bottom of the channel. I like covering when um, parallel channel tops and bottoms are met. ANIP, we're short. That's another biotech. You can see why. Rising bear wedge, bear flag, and it's right at support. We covered some of this today. It's, See, there's another thing, a philosophy I have that where people make mistakes. One of the questions I get all the time is, how do I stay in a trade? Well, how do you stay in a trade? It's because if you sell in, in tranches or you sell piecemeal or you scale it out, there's no reason not to if you're short at 47, that's down at 36, cover a quarter, a third, or half your position. And the rest of it, will cover down there if it gets down there. If it stops out above today's high, say over 40, I, I'd stop it out because you're in the money there. You just don't want to give it back. But this enables you to stay in a trade in case it does rally and then rolls over and comes down in that range. AMSG is the stock we're short. It showed a triple top. It broke and then formed the bear wedge. And this is where I went short of only about a week ago at 77 and a half. It's 68 today. And to me, if it breaks this zone, it's going to come down around 55.58. We have quite a few others, GPN, for example, Global Payments. Uh, when it broke hard here and bounced up from the bear wedge and the moving averages had crossed over to the downside, I shorted it at 66 and change. And in just a week and a half, it's 10 points lower. And, and you know, with the way this has gone up, what's to say it can't come down to 50? Creato is another. This actually worked out twice for us. When it plunged here and formed this bear wedge and it couldn't get back over the rolling over moving averages, I went short here about 47 and a half, 48. A quick hit took it all the way down to 28. We got, it got whacked. So we covered it and when it ran back up, we shorted it and we covered it when it did a 50% retrace. And now this bear wedge got us back in short at 40 and here it is at 31 and it wouldn't shock me if we saw 28, 28 and a half very quickly. Um, FIX is an interesting one that's rolling over. The technicals are a little too strong for me here, but the price pattern is uh, ugly. And I wouldn't, um, and today it dropped back at 3.3%. Uh, so it looks to me like the trend channel has been broken, moving averages have crossed over, the whole trend has changed. And the reason I say that is during the course of an uptrend, you usually see stocks going up on big volume and pulling back on low volume, up on big volume, pulling back on low volume, up on big volume, 
pulling back a level. And then finally, that changes because it thrusts below the moving averages, it takes out the trend line, it takes out lateral support, forms a little bear flag, and suddenly you're going down on heavy volume, and when it rallies, it goes up on low volume. And that's why um, I was, con uh, you know, we went short at 29 and a half. Now it got down to 26 and a half, and it just bounced. So this, if it doesn't start to act weaker, and today it was weak, but it's a little too strong for me because the underlying technicals, particularly on bounds volume, is showing a lot of uh, too, too much strength for me. And basically is what it is. Um, and then Papa John's is one of our recent shorts. When this um, ascending neckline of a head and shoulder pattern broke right there with a big breakaway gap to the downside, and then from the bear wedge, we went short of 58, and my target was 48, and we hit that today, uh, a couple days ago, 48.06, 48 even exactly, right on the button, and now it looks to me like it could form a bear flag or it could rally, maybe up towards 51.23 and then roll over some more. I don't think it's done yet because for me, this is wave one, two, and three. We could get four and five. So those are some examples of the kind of work we do at detectrader.com, both long and short. Um, I'm not averse to going long and short intraday or on swing trades or on anything else. Ken, um, I think we're out of time. Um, I'd, I'd like to, if anyone has a question, perhaps I can answer some questions. Yeah, well, uh, Harry, I wanted to thank you so much for being here. It's a, it's a welcome relief to hear a brilliant, actual expert who's uh, one of the best. Uh, you're the best stock picker out there I've seen, and that's saying a lot because I've worked with and seen hundreds of people. But you have the finest charts and the finest explanations of entries and exits I've seen of any of the educators. So thanks so much for being brilliant and knowing what you're talking about and helping uh, be part of the solution for traders. Hey, let me ask you a quick question, Ari. The tendency when markets sell, now you know a good trader, we like volatility. The markets I hate look like a flat line. The markets I love are going wildly up and down. People may want to stick their heads in the sand and be cautious about not trading or go to all cash and then just sit out a big sell-off market this year. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do because of all the profit potential, especially on the inverses and the rest of it. Do you have any advice for traders to help them overcome the fear of trading in a down market because that's very yeah, common. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the number one thing, though, and you have to do is sh when you're shorting, there's one big difference between shorting and going long. When you go long, a stock can go from two to zero and you lose your money. Uh, but you can, if you're trading on margin in particular, and you're not trading with stops on the short side, a stock can go up and keep going up forever and splitting and going up again and splitting and going up. Basically, you're trapped forever. So when, I, when I'm when i showing you swing trades or day trades, by the way, in front of you is, it, uh, is one of my perfect trades this year. Um, Pacific Biosciences, first of all, when it broke out and pulled back, we did a day trade and a little quick swing in there. And then a month later, when it broke out here, I gave you another swing. And then and when it broke out there, we gave you three. This stock's been three swings and, and all beautiful one, two, three, four, five waves, and then the big hit, and it's bounced back. But I want to point out that even in the worst markets, there are stocks going up. Here's some of my top 25 stocks. And that one broke. But stocks that I think are still in up uptrends and up channels, yet are pulling back. Some of them look great, though. I still think there's uh, ample opportunity to buy the long side. But obviously, you want to be on the right side of the market. So it's easier to trade long when the market's going up. It's easier to trade short when the market's down. If you just take a look at some of my box of shorts and the patterns that I just showed you, one after another is exhibiting the same patterns, breaking down. Look at Insight breaking down and let this week. Any snap back to the neckline in this one, and it could go substantially lower. One after another, though, all the stock and some of these stocks have been in my charts. For example, this one I spotted up here at 32. It's trading at 14. Terrible chart. And there's no reason to, there's no reason to cover a stock like that other than when it plunges to the trend line and bounces. Plunges to the trend line, bounces, plunges to the trend line, bounces. So it always is advisable when a stock's in a trend and trending, when it gets in your short, cover, 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 and cover. That's how you trade. All right. All right. All right. Sounds good. So thanks so much, Harry Boxer. All of my traders listening and everybody watches this on YouTube. Our video from the one we did last year, over a thousand views so far. And we were over 660 people here uh, registered for tonight. Highly recommend Harry Boxer at www.thetechtrader.com. A uh, great place. Uh, Harry's a great guy to learn from. He's on the short list of people who I heartily endorse as being one of the, the world's best experts to help you guys make better trades more often. So thanks so much, Harry Boxer, for being here. It's been a real pleasure. 
My pleasure, and I want to invite everybody to uh, come to the site for free, no credit cards uh, uh, needed, and just come in and spend some time with us and check it out. The vast majority of people who do want to end up subscribing, and the cost is ridiculously low, in my opinion. I was told by institutional guys who see my work that I'm, I'm out of my mind for charging as little as I do. But the biggest kick I get is the emails I get from people saying that I change your lives, I pay for their, uh, their kid's wedding, uh, they bought a house, they quit their job and they're trading full time now and they love what they're doing. And, uh, and the best case scenario is you learn a lot about technical training. So yeah. uh, come, on, come on over and uh, check us out. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Thanks so much, Harry. It's an honor. You're, you're one of the best in the world. You're like one of the top three educators in the whole universe of stock traders out there. So thanks for being one of the good guys and highly recommend you for all the world's traders. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right. Bye, Harry. Hey, traders, let's, you know, let's take a look. Harry was talking about the UVXY and here's a good example of just how good that chart is today for day traders and Harry's exactly right these are better for intraday than for swing these are the alerts my traders got pre-market today and Harry's telling me uh, his traders got in at 36.52 and that was one of my long calls for that that thing ran up seven points today so if you're on the right side of it your ETFs are especially good instruments to trade I like the inverses and I said of course to go short the XIV it's evil twin the force is strong with this one when the market goes down so does this. And I said to short this puppy at 2220 pre market, flawless victory. All right. So the money's there to be made in the market. The trick is getting the best charts under your belt. And learn from Harry. He's like the best. He picks the best charts out there in the world I've seen, which is saying a lot because I follow everybody. He's number one. So follow Harry Boxer. He will do you well. He's the, he's the kind of guy that you want to learn to trade from uh, on the short list of people I admire. So, which is saying a lot because I'm, kind of down on most of the industry. Hey, let's take a look at charts today. One of the best ones, and Harry was exactly right too, about the small caps will lead the market down. The SRT is your Russell inverse, and you can see for swing trades, this is a really good example of the type of breakout chart I like to trade. Uh, I'm currently long UVXY and VXX, and for proof of how I'm up just about a thousand bucks today in real money trades for that, let's look at a screen cap. Okay, so my today's gain loss, this is my fidelity step. I like to trade up my retirement account and make some money. I'm long just 100 or so shares. I'm kind of light. I'm going to scale in. I expect this to be over 30 or 40,000 each as the market collapses, if it does so this year. As of tonight, up 1,000. Boom. Flawless. Uh, I was trading these, these guys back in the – I sold September 1st and 2nd, and then now I'm getting back in because it looks good. This is how I set up my buy stop orders uh, – just small ball, maybe 500 bucks each worth of TVX. Harry mentioned VXX. I'm long UVXY. I put in a buy stop that never hit for GoPro in case it bounced. It didn't. Long FAZ, uh, SDS, QID, or two of the other ones. I like to start off all the trades, maybe $500 worth of stuff, and then scale in over time. So for me, a decent day trade is if I, a day trading day is if I'm up, say, seven, 800 bucks like this day is my interactive broker's account. I don't mind trading 10 or 15 instruments with $1 commissions, uh, and it all adds up. And what you want to do is scale in and trade those instruments that have the best breakout potential and make sure that you're doing it on your terms in a way that makes sense for you. For those of you new to working with me, you may have seen me kind of all over the place, including this one, Stocks and Commodities. I'm now a regular columnist uh, for Stocks and Commodities, so watch for my ongoing trading on momentum column. Uh, there, I've been around since the early days. Here I am featured by Tom in Market Watch back in 2001. Uh, I was there uh, with Harry, too, uh, it's, uh, at the uh, New York Traders Expo in February. Be sure to see Harry there if you get a chance uh, coming up. I'm not going to be there this year, unfortunately, but I was there as a featured speaker last year. Tonight, we're going to look at finding successful trades, strongest day in swing charts, risk management. This, this is it for my PowerPoints. I'm not a big fan of PowerPoints. I like working off live charts. Minor gap continuations. Today, cyber, CYBR, really good example of what one of the charts we hit today. Multi-day high breakouts and entries following wide range days. Good example of the type of chart that I like to day trade and that I like to get my traders in on are minor gaps that continue. So CYBR, really good breakout continuation, did a 50% retrace and then resumed its initial trend. We went long on the breakout, then we rolled over and went short on the breakdown. And that's what I call trading both sides of the mountain. 
you know, why would you ever consider day trading choppy instruments like the E-minis when you've got nice wide range charts like the ones that, that Harry and I teach you? So if you're gonna day trade something like that, something like this, we were long both of these today in the live room. Those are the type of charts that you wanna make a living from as a trader. I mean, just think about it, you just get, how much money would you have made if you just traded 100 or 200 shares and bought somewhere near the low and sold somewhere near the high, you'd be in the money, quite a few hundred dollars today alone. It's a great time to be trading the markets. The key is looking for the very best of the charts and figuring out the difference between the ones that run and everything else. One pattern I want you folks to look for, a visual eyeball pattern. You may have seen this at my Money Show presentations or in Stocks and Commodities. It's what I call an acceleration ramp, and that's just simply a visual pattern. Be sure to get Harry's book, too. It's great. And in it, he talks about things like 45-degree angle breakouts. I like to look for a steady uptrend that then starts to get some heat and some volatility on high volume on a 45-degree angle type of an uptrend continuation. This is the single best swing trading chart in the known universe, SRTY. BIS, another really good rock star chart that's moved up sharply, came up out of its congestion trough, broke resistance, a bump and run, a nice minor gap continuation, steady uptrend, sharper angle uptrend on high volume. Those are the type of charts you can make money with. Whenever you take a look at a chart, your goal number one is to figure out, is this a chart that I could actually make money trading? Yes or no? So trade the kind of charts that Harry Boxer teaches you, the ones that I teach you, Leave alone a lot of the choppy charts you see other people cover because they're no good. You want to trade instruments that actually have a shot, like the Biotech Short. I like trading this one, BIS. And by the way, Harry's call was exactly spot on. I remember a year ago he said markets would be good as long as biotechs were strong and then he, and worry if they'd start to, to drop, and that was exactly right. I didn't know about transport, so appreciate that tip. But anyway, we've got a minor acceleration ramp here, this thing's starting to pick up ahead of steam. Now, if you take a look back, TZA, another rock star chart, if you take a look back over, say, the 90-day chart, or, you know, if you really want to get your greed glands going, take a look at your five-year in some of these charts. The only thing that drives me nuts about these ETFs is they constantly split and do inverse splits, and so keeping track of what had been, you know, if it had been $50, 60 a share, Split adjusted 800 a share back in the 2011 sell-off. Now on sale for, for the low, low price of just 60 a share. These type of charts are the money makers, okay, or potential money makers. What you don't want to do in a bear market, I expect to get at least a 30 to 40% gain in my retirement account, and I will document it for you guys happily because I'm keen on proof. Uh, I expect to boost my retirement account significantly as well as my IB account by trading inverse ETFs if the market collapses. So that's one message to look at for breakout trading is pick the, be keen on the strongest of these charts that have good, strong, healthy, tight trends and wide volatility with enough points range to make it worth your trouble. Now, if you do go for bounce charts, that's usually a bad idea. But if you do look for bounces, they should look to be so oversold or at least cut in half recently now, what's most likely in this William Brothers chart? It's most likely to go down to five or six. It's not most likely to run back up here. The earliest, kind of like a one-day rule that I will use for a pivot play, is if it recovers, say, this bearish upper shadow, I'd wait till over, say, 1750, 18 to go long William Brothers at the earliest because of the potential here. We have a lot of others. Uh, Harry mentioned Sun Edison. That's one I'm also got buy stop orders in if it recovers, right? S-U-N-E. Other recent sold off ones include charts like Apollo, which had been how the mighty have fallen. Big charts like this, these often go down to Q. I learned that the hard way when I tried to buy the bounce in borders, didn't bounce, ended up being in the dog pound. So one learns the trend is your friend. But if you do trade pivots, make sure you're trading the most extreme charts you can and only on a high volume recovery, usually from a technical trading standpoint, I want it to recover the nearest of the major moving average lines. And that's because institutional traders use your 50, 100, and 200 simple moving average lines. And this is your 100 SMA right here. I'd wait until over nine before buying it. Down here, it's still in danger zone and it may go down to four or three, right? So you don't want to ever bounce. I've lost the most money on cheap stocks trying to buy bounces. So I learned the right way to trade them and that's to wait until you've got high volume strength above a major moving average line. 
Okay, or if we look at GoPro, another good example, and Harry mentioned, the good traders, we, we think alike. We have the, the same kind of charts, and that's a real blessing because when I tune into other educators' webinars, I say to myself, these people don't know what they're talking about. The, the morons, right? Most of the trading educators are complete buffoons, but there's a few really sharp aces out there, like Harry Boxer, my colleague Steve Nissen, and Peter Bain, and Tony Turner, and a small handful of people that actually know what they're talking about. Anyway, so, and seek them out, you know, do business with people and know what they're talking about. It's a short list, which makes your decision-making process easy. Earliest I would go long GoPro somewhere over 21, okay, because it's above the 50 SMA and it's above that previous high candle resistance, and that's likely to draw in traders, okay? My favorite plays, though, are going to be playing the inverse ETNs and ETFs on their breakout continuations. And the neat thing about all this is we're at the great at a great inflection point. And by the way, I wanted to say thanks to all. We're at 667 of you registered, so that's a big epic turnout. The force is strong with you all. Score one for Hufflepuff, and we're off to the races. Taking a look at some of the very strongest charts like this that can actually make you money versus cost you money is the trick. Now let me give you a quick primer on just a quick side note here on one of my favorite indicators that. I have traded for years called the average directional index. It's the only one that I like. I tend to not like a lot. I use horizontal support resistance like Harry, and I like using the strongest of the patterns out there. I do not like looking at things like, you know, a lot of the oscillation indicators. A lot of stupid educators, the morons out there, say, sell when the ADX gets over 40 because it's exhausted. I say, bull honky. You might have seen my article over a dozen years ago at eSignal on trading ADX the right way and basically the right way. And I also have a course that I published many years ago, uh, ADX Mastery, and it's not for sale anymore, but I used to sell ADX Mastery. When the red ADX signal line with the 14 step parameter comes from below and pierces 40 on a 15 day, 15 minute candlestick chart, that's a buy signal on a day after, you know, after that price or that 40 pierce has been hit. So here, 40, it did that, kind of like draw the line here on a closed day. I use 50 cents above the high of the day following an ADX over 40. So that would get us in here, right? Or if you miss the first breakout, it pulls back down here, pierced 40 here. So 50 cents above the high of that signal day would get you in around 54.50, 54.70. On this day would be the trade entry day. You may have seen me I put an article on this in Stocks and Commodities and one in Equities.com as well. But the signal for ADX for scanning for swing trades is wait until like a shark in the water, it's below the waterline, it breaks above the waterline, above the 40, you go long on a day after that signal breaks over 40. The, all the, most of the people in the trading industry are completely wrong because they say over 40 indi indicates exhaustion. That's wrong. If you had bought over 40, you would have made a bundle going 48 to 58, right? Or bought over the 40 here, say 55, that ran up to 60. So that's that was wrong. The correct answer is what I teach, which is ADX breaks over 40. You wait. This is kind of a congestion zone. ADX goes down when markets and charts go sideways. When it comes from below and breaks over the 40, enter on a day or two or three after that, that 40 signal line, and that usually tells you you've got a good breakout in progress. So that's just a quick writer down or for ADX, and that's it. I mean, there's no special other indicators or special software, no red arrow, green arrow, BS, like you see the indicator peddler selling. All you need is price and volume. That's all any good trader needs is price action and volume. And if you want to use as a discipline tool, you know, I like it, well, all the thousands of traders I've worked with the last 15 years at Trade Mastery and Day Trading University, I teach people use this as a discipline tool. When in doubt, stay out. If the ADX is under the 40 signal line, it's still con the price action is still consolidating, so you don't want to get in until a day after it pokes its head over the 40. Okay, whatever day that is gets you in on a good breakout continuation. So that's a good, intelligent, correct look at how to trade using the average directional index. Now let's shift gears to our longer term, just the 90-day the charts for candlestick analysis. One of the things that I like looking at and you can use those with, with bar charts too, by the way, if you don't use candles. Look for increasing average true range, increasing ATR candles. Okay, that's my favorite pattern, by the way, is this dual pair where you have a small followed by a large whole real body candle. 
And again, there's no getting out a slide rule or a metric rule and measuring it, but at least one and a half to twice the whole row body height to the previous candle in an existing uptrend often leads to additional up, up volatility. So look for increasing large green candles and go long above them as a key buy signal. You know, the trick in being a breakout trader is avoiding false breakouts. And so the way to do that is to not get in when candles are relatively melted or flat, like here. See, the candles here were a story of trend was up, but the candle heights were not increasing. And this is a very valuable, honest tip I'll share with you for free. It's a good professional trading strategy. I've traded millions of dollars worth of stocks and ETFs. I know how to trade. You do not want to buy in an uptrend if the candle heights or if you're using bar charts, the bar heights are all about the same because that's not telling you new institutional buyers are coming in day over day. That means business as usual. So it may start to look a little expensive. But the guys who bought at 25, they'll happily sell it to you at 30. And they did. <laughs> and it dropped back down to the 50% retracement. You'll often see a breakout, a retracement to around 50%, then a resumption of the initial trend. Anyway, the momentum signal that you want to look for, let me clear the lines here, is that's an aha candle, nice big candle. Today was even a bigger aha candle, a nice big wide range candle on high volume tells you you've got additional price action coming in. And I'm completely in agreement with what Harry said. After wide range days, after a lot of extreme volatility, often you'll see a kind of inhale, exhale. You'll see a flat day or two or three or even a week. It may go sideways and grind and chop around, then retrace or continue up. So after a big day, these are good days to sell into if you are long. And I did that back on September 1st and I got P&L proof on my trade logs. But anyway, I was selling the September 1st and 2nd in these instruments after being long during the breakout because of the extreme price action in my favor. And you can see, sure enough, we broke above resistance. I always like to be exact. Any good trader is that's technical resistance that we broke a couple of days ago. So anyway, from a volatility, what's worth trading to avoid false breakouts? This is one of the, the tricks I found in doing tens of thousands of real money trades over the last 15 plus years is look for wide range candles before you put on a trade. If you have a story of flat choppy candles, you're going to have flat, cho flat choppy trading behavior and activities. It's much better to wait until you have a tall institutional candle that says, hey, somebody's really buying this thing up and it's closing at its high, so it closes as a green candle, right? And again, for more on candles, learn from my colleague Steve Nissen. What I learned is how to trade momentum candles, and I did that with trial and error over the last 15 odd years. When you see a funnel like this with increasing ranges on increasing volume, it's kind of going up in a crescendo. Yeah, it may stall and drop any minute, but it's most likely to do a minor pullback and then continue on up sharply. And so. I'm keenly aware of and ready to trade and planning to profit handsomely from these nice uh, breakout continuation charts, right? You often will see things like a hammer at a bottom, right? This is the, the T, or I'm sorry, the Russ, R-U-S-S, hammered out a low here and it rallied off of that. And it broke all three moving average lines. It came back to kind of kiss them or consolidate or hug them and then finally took off to the next leg of its move up. As a professional trader, you need to always be keenly aware of price elasticity. And the way we do that, at least in my training, is to look at the box trading ranges and what's the story of volatility in those. So right now we've got a large range here, a medium range here, getting back to a large range now. So we may well be in, in store for additional move to the upside. So I'm perched on the edge of my chair here waiting for these things to continue to run on up. If you do trade pivots or if you do trade uptrending charts, be sure that they're doing better than the broad market. So if the S&P looks a little something like this, boom, yeah, it might find support and bounce, but most likely not. It may bounce to 1910 and keep plummeting on down. I'm kind of a skeptic about everything in life. So what I learned is trade the exceptional relative strength plays, things that are going up sharply in spite of a market drop. When you're looking at making your portfolio green and you're looking at some of the best charts, be aware of market dynamics of where the best of the cleanest, tightest, multi-point running range charts are that can do well for you as a trader. 
or if you're intraday trading and you're looking for these charts like today's call long in cyber or today's long call in UVXY off the bullish cup, have a technical reason to get into a trade. And by all means, learn from guys like uh, like Harry and like uh, for myself and Steve Ness and others who are genuine technical experts. So, for example, I always like buying cup breakouts. I'm kind of cautious as it gets near a previous day's low because often it'll stall there. My long call in the room today, my first long call was 3540 because that was a momentum play right above the high of the first cup pattern right there. I got them in long there and then again up at 3650. So long one, we were cautious here as it kept going on up, then added to it at 3650 and it kept rocketing on up to new highs. You know, and as you're looking for these types of wide range charts, those are the best types of plays you want to make. You know, your bread and butter as a trader. If you do trade instruments like the E-minis, for example, my calls and E-minis today, I said to go short at 1934 and a quarter. And again, we hit later was 1926 and a quarter. But I told the world's traders to go short. Hundreds of traders, my live room, 1934 and a quarter was the first short call, which was perfect. That was a brilliant short. The thing ran down 30, 40 handles, right? 30, 40 points. That would have been a fortune if you'd taken my short call today. Or the next short call was 1926 and a quarter. That one kind of chopped around a bit, ultimately gave it up and kept going down. So that was also another good winning short. So short one, short two, and you can cover by the day's end, right? One of the tricks to doing this correctly is to identify cut pattern support and resistance. So if you're looking, let's use a long pattern because most of you are more familiar with longs than shorts. In a short market, if the market sells off, look for these micro cups. It's a good classic day trading. In, you know, entry pattern is expect a minor false breakout, then a continuation, especially on a good volatile instrument like UVXY. We went long here, we went long there. Another bullish cup would have provided a third entry. One point that Harry made that I'm uh, especially uh, keen to repeat, which I completely agree with, is it's very important, and good traders think alike, and we know that I want to reemphasize the importance of what he said. What he said was, and he's correct, is be comfortable you know, scaling in and out of your trades, you know, a quarter, a third, a half the position to take early profits. I will often in my room say, sell half now, trail a stop at break even on the rest is what you'll hear more often than anything else. You know, sell half the trade now, lock in a bit, you know, bank a quick profit, trail a stop at your initial entry on the rest. So that way you're bulletproof in the trade. As you're looking for bullish cut breakouts and you're looking for high velocity, high volume entries, whether it's for day trading entries, like we said to go long here and here. And Harry also went long 3650 was his call, right? Exactly right. There's so much potential out there, but you really have to make sure that it makes sense. And when you're looking at which charts are worth trading, not all are created equal. For example, although I am long UVXY and VXX, those are inferior charts to SRTY, which is a cleaner, looks like a piece of yarn tied tight, you know, a piece of string tied tight, like a like a, a kite up in the sky. It's a nice tight line. It's not loopy and going back and forth, giving you a tough time. SRTY and BIS are the two finest uptrending charts. I'm long both the uh, VIX ETNs, UVXY and VXX, and we'll see if they're able to go on up as well. Another thing that I like to teach people to follow is your tape, your time and sales. And the reason for that, you can see, let's pull up the E-minis. You can see live dynamic price action in that instrument. Say if we're looking at the one minute candlestick chart. One of the neat things I like teaching traders about in my live trading the open.com room is the usage of one minute candlestick charts with the live tape. Now the mini futures contracts are trading, so we're still live. Houston, we've got lift off. We've got a little bit of a lift here in that chart. Using a combination of the height to the whole real bodies of candles, their momentum, along with price action and time and sales. The size is imbalanced, the size, the price movement is most important. That's the most important column is price, secondary is size, tertiary being sizes. Using your one minute candlestick charts along with these really makes sense as well. So that's something else that I would encourage you to gain some expertise in as you work with me. So 
anyway, um, I think we're about ready to wrap. We've got so many good charts. You know, the neat thing is it's a trader's market now. We've got such good volatility. Any good intelligent trader will be focused on, as I am making real money trades in today's markets, uh, the inverse ETFs are certainly the darlings of the market going up because the market sells off. Take a look at those, right? I mean, those are some outstanding charts. So anyways, I wanted to thank all of you for being here. One of the things that I want to encourage you to do is if you want to get on board with, I've got 3,700 people registered now for my trading week ahead, which is now that's actually trading month ahead. I do these once a month, the first Saturday of each month. Uh, feel free to join me at trademastery.com slash free. Uh, that will get you in on the events that I've got going. Uh, and we've got more. So what else? Let's give you some final thoughts here to wrap up. I want you in 2016 to take action by developing a systematic approach to trading. And I've put together flow charts to help my members and all that. And that's the kind of thing you want to do is step by step. How do you scan? How do you identify entries? What patterns do you use to manage your exits? Uh, how do you set your stops, targets, exit signals, the personal, personal profit making versus profit donating to the market plan for 2016? Make sure that you take action in a way that makes sense for you. Um, you know, if you want to join me as my guest, the first Saturday of each month now, I do my uh, free events. We're up to now, actually, this was a year ago. We're at 3,300. Now we're over 3,700. Uh, our free monthly Saturday uh, webinar is at trademastery.com. That's one of my network sites slash free, and that'll get you in on that as well. So anyways, I wanted to thank you all uh, for being here on behalf of both Harry Boxer from thetechtrader.com and myself from Day Trading University, swingtradinguniversity.com, uh, and trademastery.com. I wanted to thank all of you for being here. And I hope that that explains a piece of the action and the type of charts that you got business trading. As I tell my traders, and it's absolutely true, getting this list of instruments to trade correct is a lot more important than do I go long at 3540 or 3550. Didn't really matter, did it? The thing ran up five points for you. So getting the entry exact trigger is much less important than you may have imagined in your early days as a trader. What I learned is it's more important to be in the right neighborhood not in the bad neighborhood late at night, but the right neighborhood. And the other thing, too, that I mentioned is, you know, if you're going after, say, seven or $800 days, like I've done, it, there's no shame in taking a 40 or 30 or $15 profit as long as at the end of the day it all adds up to, in your favor and you make money at the end of the day and your stops are relatively small. Even if you have days where you do just a little, you know, fooling around trades where you don't make a lot, having a small, tight approach is a much more intelligent way to trade the markets professionally and correctly uh, then trading large size, one or two stocks, doing a Hail Mary pass, hope it works, shut your eyes, pull the slot machine handle, and see what comes out in the trade. That's not how you trade. You trade a much more dynamic, uh, fluid set of instruments uh, and take profits early and often so that you take money at the end of the day. And that's what I try and teach people how to do. So, well, yeah, thanks so much. I appreciate it. The ADX uh, question is the average directional index. Uh, that's by J. Wells Wilder. So thanks. I appreciate it. A question about how to take action if you can only trade after hours. That would be a question for your broker. It all depends on what broker you're using. So anyways, uh, good charts. And uh, yeah, in interactive brokers, there's a the flag or toggle to enable after hours trading that you got to set up. It's generally not a good idea to trade after hours. It's better to trade I will often sell gaps in my favor, though, pre-market. A lot of my best winning trades are they selling at 8.30 or 9 o'clock if I've got a big gap up in my favor that's starting to then drop, okay? If you get a gap in your favor and the gap is extreme in your favor and then it's making a bear cup or a downtrend, it's good to close out that trade even pre-market and bank a profit before the opening bell. But in general, it's best to just trade it during the market hours, you know, your first 10 years as a trader trading these kind of charts that actually makes sense. You know, you can see the truth of the situation. It's usually not a good idea to trade choppy instruments like the E-minis, other than big sell-off days like today or big rally days. But the other 90% of the days, if you're going to day trade, you want to trade the kind of charts that Harry Boxer and I teach you about. Those are the kind of charts that actually have potential and actually have some points with them, right? That way you could get in anywhere on a day trade, you know, anywhere along on a day trade today, 
would have worked out fine for a lot of these instruments. So you don't have to even get specifically correct if you're within 50 cents or so of a decent entry and within 50 cents or so of a decent exit and still make several points. So good time to be trading. All right. So anyway, thanks everybody for being here. Wanted to wrap up tonight's event. And uh, for more on Harry Boxer, go to thetechtrader.com. And for more on me, go to trademastery.com. And it's great to see all 600 plus of you here tonight. So thanks so much. It's another big turnout. Me and Harry do these, uh, or Harry and I to be more grammatically correct. Score one for Ravenclaw. Uh, we do these about once a year. And so it's great to see almost 700 of you turn out today. I hope that Harry and I can be part of your you know, success, be part of the solution to your trading. You know, we know what we're talking about. And there's so many people that don't. I tend to attract the intelligent people that can tell the difference, as I'm sure Harry does too. You can tell by reading between the lines if an educator is a genuine expert versus a charlatan, which is most of the educators. A few of us are decent, uh, and I'm certainly honored to share the stage with Harry Boxer. I recommend him, recommend myself, and a few others out there. And wanted to wish you all the best for a prosperous and happy new year, uh, trading directionally the right way, making more money than you give back to the market. So. On behalf of all of us, this is Ken Calhoun. I'll be 52 years old next Tuesday. How did that happen? Coming up soon. Anyway, wanted to wish you all the best for an outstanding 2016. Y'all have been an amazing crowd. It's great to see the enthusiastic comments. I haven't read them off in the interest of time, but thanks for all the positive feedback, and thank you so much for being here.